Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the presentation of our colors by the Douglas County Sheriff's Office Honor Guard. We will now have our national anthem performed by Erica Carrion. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the rampart we watch, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockies and glow, the bombs bursting in air, it proved through the night that our flag was still there. O oh, satyrs that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Good morning. My name is Amy Davis, and I am your high school principal. Before I officially welcome all of you to our 22, 2022 commencement exercises, I would like to first recognize an important group of people here with us today. Having been a military wife, I can certainly appreciate the dedication and sacrifice our service members make when serving our country. I would like to ask that our seniors who will be joining the military please rise. Thank you for your commitment to our country. Next, I would like to ask any members of our audience who are currently serving or have served in the past to rise if you are able.
We honor your dedication to the values that we hold true as a country. You may be seated. Now I would like to officially welcome you to the 2022 High School Commencement Exercises for Colorado Connections Academy. <laughs> to our district authorizers, Mapleton Public Schools, Durango District 9R, and Education Re-Envisioned BOCES, thank you for providing this educational opportunity for our students across the state of Colorado. I would like to specifically recognize Mr. Dan Snowberger, Director of Education Re-Envisioned BOCES, and Ms. Bethany Drozdahl, Board Member with Education Re-Envisioned Re BOCES, who are joining us here today. To my fellow teachers, counselors, administrators, and staff, your tireless dedication and commitment to our students' success, success help make this day happen. Thank you all. <laughs> to the families, family and friends of our graduates, this day is a celebration for you as well. <laughs> for truly, without your support and guidance, this day would not have been achievable for many of our graduates. Graduates, turn around and tell them how much you love them. <laughs> Finally, to our true guest of honor, our graduating seniors. You did it. <laughs> All of your hard work has paid off. And we are all very, very proud of you. In the words of Dr. Seuss, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Kid, you'll move mountains. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Congratulations, graduates. And as a reminder to our family and friends in the audience, students will be called onto stage by their seating order, not as the alphabetical order noted in the program. I would now like to introduce someone who has been a true support to me this year, our assistant principal, Mr. Jeff McLean. Thank you, Ms. Davis, and congratulations to all of you sitting here today. It's exciting. I know it's been a long road for you guys. Ups and downs, ups and downs, and you made it, so congratulations to each and every one of you. I would like to welcome some special guests up on stage at this time. I'm going to start with our Mapleton salutatorian, Rowan Luke. Rowan, come on up. good. It's all good. All righty. Thanks for the Thank you, Ken Klein, Zora from North Penn School of School. There we go. Yep. Awesome. Hi, my name is Rowan Luke, and I'm honored to be the Colorado Connections Academy at Mapleton Salutatorian for the class of 2022. I've been with Connections since the beginning of my sophomore year. Connections has given me the opportunity to excel while also allowing me to participate in other enrichment programs, such as WINGS Aerospace Pathways. Next year, I will be studying aerospace engineering at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. I would, I would like to thank the, the Colorado Connections Academy staff for their support throughout my high school journey, and now my honor and now it is my honor to announce the Colorado Connections Academy at Mapleton's valedictorian, Eva Herbert. Hello, 
my name's Eva, like he said. Um, hello, class of 2022. Um, you know, it's been an interesting couple years, but like they said, we made it. Um, way back in fifth grade, my whole class was given these sweatshirts marked class of 2022. And I thought, 2022, that's really far away. But it's not so far away anymore. We made it. Every person here has taken a different journey to arrive at this graduation ceremony. Each person's story is filled with different experiences and emotions, but what they all have in common are hard work and connection to Kesney. The online schooling experience may not be traditional, but it teaches invaluable lessons. Some of you here have been doing school online for your whole lives. Some of you may have just started. I joined Connections starting my junior year of high school, but before that, I did in-person for my whole life but I'd gone to four different schools and moved states six times. I've been the new kid more times than I can count, and that made online school really inviting. I didn't have to find new people to sit with at lunch. I didn't have to reintroduce myself to all my classmates. I just started the school year like everyone else, and that was that. Aside from that, online school has taught me greater self-sufficiency than I was ever capable of before. Yes, Connections allows greater leniency than most traditional schools, but that forces students to hold themselves accountable. Many of my teachers can attest to the fact that I struggled with that responsibility for a while. But I learned that I was the only one who could make it happen. Of course, we have live lessons, access to tutors, and wonderful teachers, but we don't have the pressure of in-person teachers or classmates. We have to do everything ourselves. So our paths will diverge again once the ceremony ends. We will all have to adjust to new situations. I plan to go to an in-person college in Kentucky, and I may have more to get used to than most of my peers will, but I will be entering this new challenge with a wider variety of experience than most. The same thing goes for all of you. Your path will be different and you'll have to adjust, but you'll possess the unique knowledge that comes from attending Connections Academy. Our high school careers may be coming to an end, but that only means we can now reflect on what we've learned. We learned to write essays in Times New Roman, 12 point font, double spaced with proper headings. <laughs> <laughs> We learned about mitosis and meiosis, reflection and refraction. We studied countless wars and historical events. We learned the unit circle and the quadratic formula and all the songs to remember them by. And those are just the basics. Many of us studied music or aerospace stuff. <laughs> but outside of school, we also learned to drive. Many of us got our jobs and experienced the joys of customer service for the first time. We survived a pandemic. We learned how to smile with our eyes when our mouths were covered and navigated the new world brought about by COVID. Most sports were canceled or minimized. Social interaction changed drastically. With all of that, for me at least, connections was a constant when nothing else was reliable. School gave me something to do when I didn't know how my sport or my job would be affected. I certainly needed that, and I think we all did. My point with all of this is that we went through a lot. We persevered through a very unusual high school experience and we should be proud of ourselves for that. Now it's time to go out into the world and pursue our futures. It's a daunting task, but so long as we focus on doing what makes us happy and living in the present, everything will work itself out. So be proud of yourself, believe in yourself, and have fun. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce our Durango salutatorian, yeah, you know, I'm sorry. Come on up. We do have a student performance first. We Cranford singing "Far Away" by Nickelback. All yours, Jordan. There's an awkward silence in the song, so just give us a second, please. <laughs> There's 
this time, this place, misused, mistakes, too long, too late, who was I to make you wait, just one chance, just one breath, just in case there's just one left, cause you know, you know, you know that I love you. I've loved you all along, and I miss you. Been far away for far too long. I keep dreaming you'll be with me. with you I withstand all the veil to hold your hand I'd give it all I give for us give anything but I won't give up cuz you know you know you know that I love you I've loved you all too long I keep dreaming you'll be with me and you'll never go stop breathing if I don't see you anymore so far away been far away for far too long so far away been far away for far too long but you know you know you know I want it I wanted you to stay cause I need it I need to hear you say that I love you you all along and I forgive you for being away for far too long so keep breathing cause I'm not leaving you anymore believe it hold on to me never let me go keep breathing cause I'm not Fantastic. Thank you, Jordan. And now I'd like to introduce our Colorado Connections Academy at Durango Salutatorian, Nicholas Elliott. Nicholas, come on up. Hello. My name is Nicholas Elliott, and I am honored to be the Colorado Connections Academy at Durango Salutatorian for the class of 2022. As this class prepares to take the next step towards their future, I would like to take a moment to thank the staff at Colorado Connections Academy for all their hard work and dedication in helping us walk across the stage today. I also would like to thank the families, the friends, and the many individuals who took it upon themselves to be in our lives and who are here today to celebrate our achievements. Among those students we celebrate today 
It is my pleasure and honor to announce the Colorado Connections Academy at Durango's valedictorian, Michael Natal. Before I begin, I'd like to point out that Mr. Nicholas Elliott actually beat me out by .02 GPA points in the last few weeks of high school. <laughs> I asked if he wanted to read each other's speeches, but he didn't seem like he was up for that. <laughs> How many of you like being right? How many of you would rather be wrong? Very few of you, okay. Being right is exhausting. But we live in a society that places being right above everything else. What if we were graduating right now because we all try to be as wrong as possible? None of us want to be wrong, but being wrong is one of the most important factors in our growth. What exactly do I mean by that? Let me give you an example based on the writings of essayist Joe Balcom. Imagine that you are climbing, on the climbing a thousand foot ladder on the side of a steep mountain face. You want to get to the top so you can prove that you are superior to everyone else. But with each step you take, the previous step disintegrates, forcing you to keep climbing. The ladder gets steeper and steeper. Your arms are getting tired. You're becoming more and more fatigued. At the beginning, nothing could stop you. But now you're completely exhausted. You can't possibly reach the top, but the trip back down is a pretty hard fall. You're stuck. This is what it's like when you continually try to prove yourself right. The mountain you were climbing is your own creation, the hill you are willing to die on. But there is an alternative. Consider the scientific method. To refresh your memory, the scientific method is a process of asking a question, formulating a hypothesis, and gathering evidence to support your conclusion. But before the scientific method's invention, there was an older and far simpler rule that scientists abided by. Quite simply, always prove yourself wrong. It sounds a little odd, but the premise of it is pretty straightforward. If you try and prove yourself right, you will always find the one piece of evidence that supports your opinion. But unless you take that extra step, you will never find the overwhelming evidence that completely contradicts your theory. Without this vital step, the scientific method is a failure. You see, we are emotional creatures. You probably heard the phrase, facts don't care about your feelings, but neither do our feelings care about the facts. Our rationale is almost entirely driven by momentary feelings, but we can combat this by understanding this flaw. We can reach a conclusion by one of two methods, reasoning, which comes to a conclusion based on evidence and logic, or rationalizing which begins with a desired conclusion and finds evidence to support itself. This is called motivated reasoning, or more commonly, confirmation bias. We tend to choose rationalization because it allows our limited brains to understand a vast and limitless world. By beginning with a conclusion, less research is required, less effort is required, and less evidence is required. Put simply, it's easier. But by applying this, and understanding our cultural desire to be right, we can become more right than we have ever been. But this doesn't just apply to science. We need to apply this principle to other aspects of our lives. I'd like to ask you a series of questions. Whether you'd like to raise your hand in response, or if you'd just like to quietly reflect, is up to you. Think about some big argument in your life, whether it be about politics, religion, or some other personal disagreement. Did you meet your opposition your enemy in the situation? Now I want you to think really hard about this one. Did you listen to them? Or instead of listening to them, did you anticipate what they were going to say, waiting for a key sentence or phrase that would vindicate you? We all have because we're fragile creatures. Our delicate stand being in the wrong. But true personal growth happens when we step outside of our comfort zone, when we listen to others with a willingness to learn and a desire to be proven wrong. There's no disadvantage to practicing this philosophy. If you're incorrect in your beliefs, 
then you can only come closer to the truth. If you're already correct, then you will only build a stronger defense and conviction. But don't stop there. After you've proven yourself wrong, prove yourself wrong again. Challenge your newfound beliefs once more and be sure you got it right this time. Then challenge yourself again and again and never stop. Instead of fighting, try arguing for a friend's opposing political beliefs so you can foster a deeper understanding of their ideology. Learn about a friend's religion so you can discover what drives their core's beliefs. Learn the whole story before making a decision without possession of all the facts. As you move forward to the next steps in your life, I ask you to remember this practice. Humanize your enemy and see issues from their point of view. Stop expecting to be offended and start truly listening. Seek the truth, whether or not it's what you want to hear, and by proving yourself wrong, foster a unified community of deeper understanding that places verity and truth, not correctness, above all else. By doing this, continue multiplying the many achievements you have already accomplished today. In an increasingly polarized, politicized, and precarious world, seeking a greater awareness of the world's truths is more vital than ever. Stop building your own mountain. Thank you, and may God bless your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And we have another student performer. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Sierra Tatum. Come on up, Sierra. time for dancing and that's just gonna have to wait a while ain't got time for messing around and it's not my style this whole town can slow you down people taking the easy way but I know exactly where I'm going getting closer and closer every day and I'm all I'm almost there. People down here think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Trials and tribulations, I've had my share. There ain't nothing gonna stop me now, cause I'm almost there. I remember daddy told me fairy tales can come true you've got to make it happen it all depends on you so I'll work real hard each and every day and things for sure are going my way just doing what I do look out boys and I'm coming through and I'm almost there I'm almost there people gonna come here from everywhere I'm almost there, I'm almost there. These are the times that we're going to remember and cherish the most. It's time to move on to our next journey, but let's remember everything we've been through together. There's been trials and tribulations, you know I've had my share. But I've climbed the mountain, I've crossed the river, I'm almost there. We're almost there, we're almost Wow, thank you, Sierra. That was amazing. Nice job. I'd like to welcome our Summit Connections Academy salutatorian, Brecken Denhargit. Come on up, Brecken. Denhartog, I'm sorry.
Hi, my name is Breckenden Hartog, and I'm honored to be the Colorado Summit Connections Academy salutatorian for the class of 2022. I've attended Colorado Connections for only a year, but it has allowed me to follow my dream for one day playing collegiate hockey. The last seven months while attending Colorado Connections, I lived in Canada and I was able to play junior A hockey. The online school allowed me to be flexible and to balance practice, games, and travel, all while being able to stay on top of my schoolwork. Without this option, the last year would not have been possible. I'd like to take, take some time to thank Colorado Connections Academy staff for not only helping me, but for helping all the other students be successful in school this last year. I'd like to thank my family for their love and support, which has helped me get to where I am today. It is now my honor to announce the Colorado Summit Connections Academic Valedictorian, Shyla Tamala. Um, hello, my name is Shyla. I know he just said that, but um, first I just want to say a thank you to everyone who's here, all the families, all the friends, and a special thanks to anyone who's in the military or serving our country, police officers, firefighters, anyone like that. Teachers, especially, you guys have, I've only been here for a year or two, but you guys have made a really big difference for me. And, uh, ooh. <laughs> I think someone's car <laughs> might be having an issue, but yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been such a good year, even despite everything that's happened. I mean, for me, it was like probably one of the worst years I've had and I'm still here. And I think that that says a lot about everyone who's here too. Everyone showed up every day. You came, you bettered yourself, you educated yourselves. You did the best you could every day, and I know sometimes that's not always easy. So I think that's a really big thing to applaud, and I hope everyone can recognize that within themselves. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say except that this year off, it really helped me kind of discover my own passions besides sports. And I'm really happy to say that next year I'm going to see you Boulder for neuroscience, so I'm really excited about that. <laughs> But yeah, congratulations to everyone, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and you celebrate and have lots of fun with your families and friends. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Shyla. Um, it is now my privilege to introduce your keynote speaker for your graduation ceremony today. And I will tell you the truth, when I thought about who I would want to hear from if I were sitting in the seats there where you are, well, I mean, first I thought maybe I could get Denzel Washington or Tom Cruise, but <laughs> they were busy. So then I realized what I would really want to hear from, the person I would really want to hear from, would be someone who has truly invested his time and his energy in so many of our seniors' year. So it is a huge honor to introduce our one and only Mr. Matt Rafferty. Thank you, Ms. Davis. You know, the first thing I did actually was when Ms. Davis asked me to write this speech was Obviously, I went to Google, YouTube wrote how to write a graduation speech. I've never done this. I'm sure you all have never done this either, right? Um, so what I learned, though, is, is you have to, you must, without fail, have a quote in your speech, or it simply doesn't count. And so for the sake of all your diplomas here, I thought I'd get that out of the way right at the beginning, okay? Um, so the late U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch said, graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. Today truly is the beginning, the starting line for the rest of your lives, and the journey that will take you to places you never imagined it would. So with that in mind, I mean, think of how truly, truly exciting today is for you. We're here to celebrate all of you today. 
And the other thing is we can take a big sigh of relief because now we got the quote out of the way. So these diplomas will now be official here in a little bit. But good morning, everybody. I, I really am honored to be speaking with you this morning. I know I have over half of you in my homeroom. Um, your teachers over here, the faculty behind us as well. We're just so excited for you all to be here, and we want to congratulate you. Uh, class of 2022 graduates. I don't think we've said 2022 enough, so I thought we'd bring that back in the mix. So uh, today you're accomplishing something big, real big. Today there's about 330 of you, and you're getting this high school diploma. This is a day you'll remember for the rest of your life. Um, but your journey to start here, it all began before you could even spell the word diploma. Your journey to get here uh, has taken you a majority of your life on earth this far, if you think about it. Your journey to get here today is truly a fantastic accomplishment. But it 100% will not be the biggest accomplishment of your life for all of you. Yeah? It might be the biggest educational accomplishment. It might have the most people here to celebrate with you today. But each and every one of you will achieve far greater things educationally, professionally, and personally. Some of you in all three aspects, possibly. When thinking about this speech, I really wanted to find some all-encompassing message or value to share with you today as you go out into the world. Uh, but the more and more I got to thinking about it, the more and more I realized how truly diverse this class of 2022 is, especially here at Colorado Connections Academy. If you sit there and think of all the graduations happening around Colorado right now, um, I would be safe to say that this class today has way more diverse backgrounds and different pathways to get here today than any other class. We have graduates from Cortez to Sterling, from Trinidad to Craig, everywhere in the middle. Many of you made long journeys to be here just today to celebrate. We have world-class athletes. We have parents. We have multiple parents. Even one has twins. We have graduates here today going to nearly 10 different institutions and universities here in the state of Colorado alone. We have TikTok stars. We have students starting their businesses abroad. We have students going to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Montana State University, University of Kentucky, even the University of York in England, just to name a few of the great colleges you all are going to. We have Olympians in the, in the audience here today. We also have many, many full-time, 40-hour-per-week workers. We have a lot of you here. Some of you work way more than that. So this list I just gave obviously only scratches the surface of who you all are and your individual journeys to get here to graduation this morning. All of you came to Connections Academy to succeed for a multitude of reasons, and today, all of your journeys finally collided. It's a great thing, it's a beautiful thing, and it speaks to you and your family in the pathway and journey you got here today. Speaking of pathways, though, that truly is life. That truly is what makes life, taking your own pathway. Um, I remember when I was your age, sitting in the seat a little over a decade ago, I did have more hair at the time, and um, you know, I had it all in my mind. I had the pathway, the journey, the vision. It was tunnel vision. Okay, I sat there thinking I knew exactly what I was going to do. Ooh, good catch. Exactly what I was going to do. At the time, I played trumpet, and I was going to the University of Northern Colorado to get a degree in music performance, and bang, 10 years from there, I was going to be in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, right? Okay, so without sparing you the riveting details of the past decade, that did not happen. Yeah. But you know what? I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be today, speaking to all of you. Your teachers over there, everybody behind us, we are exactly where we're supposed to be. We probably didn't even know it at the time when we were sitting in your seats. And so that journey speaks to that. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that you might think right now you know what you're going to do or where your life will go, but life simply does not work like that. Yeah? Now bear with me real quick. As the advisory slash music teacher, I'm going to try to make a metaphor. This could go terribly wrong, so just bear with me if it's bad. But... You can always set your sailboat in the direction of your choosing when you begin your journey. However, once you set sail, there is no controlling the wind. There's no controlling the weather. Actually, there's really not controlling anything at all. This isn't to frighten you or let you know that you have no control over what happens next. But I can promise you, if you look back in the next 10, 20, or 50 years from now, there will be an overwhelmingly humongous amount of happenings that occurred that you wouldn't ever have thought would have happened to you. So my message with this is just to let it happen. See where life takes you. Many of you know exactly what is happening after you leave here today. Some of you are going to college in the fall. 
Some of you have a sweet summer job locked up, right? Some of you are taking a gap year just to find yourself. All of these are fantastic options. Now, some of you have no clue what you're doing after here today, but you know in about two hours, your parents or family is throwing a sweet graduation party for you, and you'll get there as soon as you can when Mr. Rafferty just stops blabbering up here on stage, all right? Um, no, but in all honesty, it's great to know what's next. But none of you know the inner details of what's about to happen next. The dominoes will inevitably start to fall here as you enter adulthood. Don't be intimidated by this, though. Grasp it, be open to it, and truly know that soon your life will be somewhere you truly never imagined it to be, all of you. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. It's mostly cool, though, okay, mostly cool. So embrace it and take it. Most importantly, though, enjoy that journey to get into where you need to be. So the other important thing I would love to still instill with you today uh, is to be aggressively purposeful with your interactions with everybody and anybody, okay? Be aggressively purposeful with them after you leave here today. This kind of ties into what I just spoke about, but in the next decade of your life, you're going to meet way more people than you will in any other time frame in your life. It's just how going into adulthood works, okay? Many of you will meet your, your husband, your wife, your partner, new lifelong friends. You might meet your new business associate or a mentor and so many, many more. The crazy thing is you never know how they might answer your life. Not knowing who they are or when they will come into your life is even more the reason to open yourself and authentically get to know who they are. Take the time to do so. Rashid Ogunlaru said, be genuinely interested in everyone you meet, and everyone you meet will be genuinely interested in you. So two things about this quote. The first thing is that is now our second quote of this speech. So we've clearly met the quote quota for this speech, so don't worry about these diplomas. You're going to be walking out of here soon. But the, sec the second, most importantly, though, is you know this quote can be seen through your time just here at Connections Academy. If all of you right now think of your interactions with your most impactful teacher or counselor here at Connections Academy, I can guarantee you it goes way beyond academics, right? Way beyond academics. The genuine interest in the happenings of your life and then all of you engaging us and allowing the interaction to grow and flourish shows that you all have this capability to start great relationships because all, all this is virtual. You haven't met most of us until today. You haven't met most of your classmates here, but it shows you have it within you. So. The people you meet in the years to come will easily present themselves to you. It will be each, up to each and every one of you, though, to take the effort and urgency to truly find out more about them. Your life will be forever changed if you are open to knowing people and equally letting them know you. Okay? All right. That's all. So graduating class of 22, 2022, I implore you to leave here today. Set your sails. Let life take you in whatever direction it might. And I sincerely congratulate each and every one of you, okay? You go, you go enjoy this life. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. See, did I not make a great choice in the keynote speaker? <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Rafferty. Um, it is now my honor to introduce our Executive Director for Colorado Connections Academy, Ms. Darla Gardner, for the confirmation of certificates. Thank you. Um, I am not a keynote speaker, so I'm going to keep it nice and short. Graduates, it is my privilege and honor to verify that you have met the graduation requirements of the state of Colorado in conjunction with Connections Academy at Mapleton, Connections Academy at Durango, and Connections Summit Academy. We are now going to present diplomas. We're going to begin with the first row, please stand. And please zip your gowns for the fabulous photographic opportunities. First up, we have Michael Grub Gruby. M Michael Gruby, thank you. Michael. 
Jordan Cranford. Rowan Luke. Erica Terion. Eva Herbert. Nicholas Elliott. Michael Nuttall. Sierra Tatum. Brecken Denhartug. Shyla Tumala. Isaac Lundstrom. Alize Salinas. Joshua Valdez. Aiden Ponzi. Sophia Justiano. And accepting a diploma on behalf of Anna Justiano. Sydney Van Poulin. Alina Shatin. Emily Rose Val Alapondo. Corinna Thomason. Malin Gabrielson. Kalis Camacho. Kyle Metke. Dominic Espinoza. Connor Stevenson. Joshua Potter. Joshua Martella. Max McCartney. Chase. Jones, Jeffrey Colm, Ethan Foster, Jaron Brown. Liliana Garcia. Natalie Fry. Riken Bryce. Celeste. Gonzalez Romero. Jaden Young. Hannah Hines.
Leah Coleman. Rachel Rains. Ariana Brosman. Alana Blanca. Grim Hyder. Elise LeBlanc. Mona Ilarby. Faith Wakefield. Alexandria Estrada Rampa. Diani Praney Rome. Mistelin Kuzov. Rebecca Crowell. Ryan Campo. Caleb Bennett. Kennedy Lawless. Patrick Boland. James Rubison. Genesee Branham. Danielle Meester. Alexis Lucero. Remy Virgil. Matthew Lilly. Sydney Priestley. Kaya Cole. Madison Altman. Randall Wood. Seth Bus Curtis Kramer Jaden Davis Christopher Sedicase Estrella Torres. Oh. 
Heidi McDowell. Alexis Burns. Valen Powers. Skylar Salvador. Corey Decker. Kaylee Ivy. Joshua Schonberger. Kira Jaden. Kaylee Dahl. Christina Chitakova. Anissa Perry. Juliana Cassander. Zacharias Daria. Dana, I'm sorry, Zachariah Dana. Priscilla Sai. Meredith Zamaripa. Carlos Loya. <laughs> Wyatt Pollock. Thaddeus Redbird. Cooper Manifold. Cecilia Alvarado. Chloe Dunn. Tyler Miller. Sam Ingram. Mia Ortiz. Jasmine Martinez. Devin Maste. Naomi Swanson. Avery Pacheco. Gracie Larson. Riley Lubers.
Heidi Lacoste. Nicole Work. Andres Dabila Stegler. Nicholas Newhard. Derek Jackson. Haley Miller. Mariah Kistner. Christian Elric. April Bailey. Jack Forrest. Pamela Teus. Demi Griswold. Kelsey Hansen. <laughs> Cherish Loya Bernard. <laughs> Cherish, I at least get a high five. <laughs> Marissa Dominguez. Alejandro Maldonado. Max Schramm. Mia Mosteda. Jaden Haberhauer. Chase Aiken. Benjamin Seafang. Aaliyah Grace. Juno Meyer. Ethan Pavic. John Forrest. Jorge Antonio Santoyo. Tristan Sir Isabella Garwood Kaylin Takeuchi
Sarah Esquivel. Francisca Esquivel. Ryan Johnston. Caitlin Carpenter. Benjamin Legu. Faith Sensky. Adam Sodic. Hannah Ingaseth. Juliet Hall. Ramada Farah. Kaya. Ozekin, Kaya Ozekin, Caitlin Vaughn, Tynesha Randolph, Taylor Rogers. Emily Tavolacci. Isabel Huerta. Mary Erickson. Layla Hernandez. Elizabeth Gray. Marissa Cola Nui. Jamie Svensson. Christy Malenciano. Sienna Ramos. Angie Romero. Sophia Thomason. Macy Coulter. Jacob Barnes. Teal Havel. Star Holden. Hannah Bassett. Jennifer Quintero Chavez. Oh. 
Vanessa Valdez Chavez. Brian Cuevas. Caitlin Hilborn. Mackenzie Oliver. Dylan Parlo. Lee Kanayama. Samantha Diesel. JC Kermis. Christina Livingston. Colby Dunn. Zach Gord. Ian Brimhall. Brian Robertson. Kaylee Harris. Olivia Armstrong Beatty. Alexandria Flynn. Richard Raider. Wyatt Morgan. Aya Ahuti. Emmanuel Madrigal. Ariana Reddy. Aiden Romero. Vladimir Wallant. Shane Simpson. Jonathan Green. Patrick Olrogi Jr. Preston Gavilanes. Veronica Osorio Perez. Mark Pearson.
Mason Ray Adams. Reese Metzler. Dominic Romero. Trevor Ward. We have one more thing to do before it's official. So I would like our seniors to please stand. Your tassel should be on the right side. I'll give you a moment to get ready. We do have graduates that were unable to be with us today, so we certainly want to celebrate with them. And if they're watching now, tassels on the right. You may now move your tassel to the left. Congratulations, class of 22. Come on, we can celebrate better than that. You are dismissed. Thank you for joining us today. Have a safe ride home and a wonderful summer.